Hello and welcome to my new video on Net Zero Energy. My name is Chatin Lard and today I'm going to be talking about designing and constructing Net Zero structures. So what is net zero? Net zero, also known as zero net energy, means that the buildings produce enough clean renewable energy on its own to entirely cover its energy consumption. Buildings that are net zero may be connected to the electrical grid, but the amount of energy that flows off the grid into the building must be less than or equal to the amount of energy that flows onto the grid. Although the definition of net zero is fairly simple, the measurement isn't necessarily so. Energy use and production fluctuates over time, month by month and year by year. Depending on the time frames chosen, a building that produces more energy than it consumes may in fact be in the opposite situation in a different time period. It is important to consider seasonal factors when calculating whether a building achieved net zero. In the Middle East, energy consumption is high in the summer, when home dwellers are using their AC systems while lighting and other equipment may have higher impact during other seasons. Because of this, any net zero calculation should span at least a year, in a year-long increments in order to balance out the seasonal variations. The first step towards net zero is creating extremely energy efficient living spaces. The most cost effective way of reaching net zero at the time is to achieve as much energy efficiency as reasonably feasible and then to install enough PV panels to account for the remaining projected consumption. Since solar PV panels are relatively expensive, energy efficiency should be the first step. Energy efficiency gains can be achieved through both high-performing appliances and design elements that induce more efficient occupant behavior. Examples of high-energy appliances and systems include efficient chillers and pumps, thermal wall insulations and ceilings, uh, low-flow water fixtures uh, for hot water, uh, LED and fluorescent lights, and Energy Star appliances. The unit owner action is ultimately what leads to the amount of consumption. Uh, hence, uh, design aspects uh, such as wall switches uh, to prevent phantom loads and ample natural lighting to reduce the need and desire to switch on indoor lights help reduce energy consumption further. Coming to the use of renewable energy, solar PV panels need to be installed to generate energy. The size of each solar PV array need to fit to the unit size with ranging from 4.8 kW to 7.2 kW. All installations have to be performed in order to achieve and exceed the energy production target. Apart from the intricities inherent in modeling complex systems such as buildings, the main element that leads to differences between models and reality is the human behavior. There are differences in energy consumption that stem from differences in occupant behavior. Habits related to energy consumption can vary between people for a very wide variety of reasons. Differences in energy education, individual schedules and how much time is spent at home and when. The types of activities they tend to do at home, how contentious they are of their energy use and how much they care, how much control they have over their home. And variations in personal comfort levels are a few examples. Uh, these are patterns that need to be analyzed. One aspect that is difficult to measure and account for is that of the rebound effect. The rebound effect is where people increase their use of products and facilities as a result of this reduction in operating cost, thereby reducing the energy savings achieved. So simply, if someone knows that they are using less energy and spending less money when using an appliance, they are more likely to use it with greater frequency mitigating the energy savings that would have been reached with normal usage. It is difficult to know the impact of the rebound effect and it varies by product but a survey of different studies suggests that the direct rebound effect is 10% or less. 
Though this demonstrates that energy efficiency gains are still made, it does pose challenges for modelers and can lead to discrepancies between projected and annual savings. Finally, the density and scale of city developments are the result of complex planning processes which involve various policies and mechanisms including regulations and subsidy schemes. While development is carried out through a large number of different processes and at different levels in each country, one can generally distinguish between two stages. The initial strategic planning stage in which policies and zones are defined through master plans that determine the scale and density of the development and the later design stage in which specific features of a building such as energy systems, individual types and common facilities are determined in detailed plans. When energy aspects are ignored in the initial stage in which a neighborhood's density and scale are determined, this will inevitably constrain the designs of neighborhood's energy systems in the second stage and may lead to suboptimal solutions. The cost of energy systems is obviously another crucial variable since it is basic consideration that it will determine their actual development. Yet, the relationship between the scale and density of the net zero communities and their costs remains unexplored. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel for more such topics on technology, sustainability, energy, and more. Thank you.